Camp Forth means to me is all about the, the lifelong friends and shaping everyone's personalities and trying new things. So that would include like sports and being with your friends like, the whole time. I think it's quite nice because it's like separate and I feel like it's really nice to be away from home and then going home and being with your family so it's kind of like two worlds and it's quite it's really nice to be with your friends for like half of the year and then with your family when you go back. Pipe Bounds really shaped me as a person it's just something that I can do outside of school. Here it's quite nice to just get everyone involved in that kind of thing. The atmosphere in the house is really good because they always have people to talk to and if you're ever like down or sad then there's always people that you can talk to like the house mistresses. I feel like I've got like another family. So sports really good here because it gives everyone a wide opportunity to do every sport each term which I think is really nice to like, be able to try different things. I feel really lucky because it's just like so many opportunities that we can do and obviously the support in the lessons is really good and I feel like I've learnt like so much. You have so much to do here that it kind of just becomes a little world instead of a school. We are part of one big family. I think. Um, we do build a sense of community as our main priority and forth. And it's just a homely atmosphere, it's just very pleasant. Being at Ampleforth means many things. It allows you to uh, succeed in anything you want to. There's a very positive atmosphere around here that if you don't succeed then try again. The support around here is phenomenal. You're not expected to be that independent guy when you're in first year. This is the point of Ampleforth, you're made into that independent person, which I feel like you are by the time you get to our stage at sixth form, which is nice. They do it, they do it exactly right. I think the favourite time of the week at school is Abbey Mass on Sunday. To be able to perform in that every week is not just helping yourself, it's friendship. It does help you become a better person, I feel. A more all-rounded person, a more genuine person. And someone that generally people can actually like and get along with in the professional world, which is what you want to be. I think the Benedictine values are pretty key to our education here. I think the, the main one that strikes me is the second chance and I think that everyone at our age always do make mistakes and I think you should be forgiven. I would just say you, you'd be missing out if you didn't come. I think you'd lose a dimension of education if you didn't come. The teachers are very supportive and welcoming and they will always uh, have your back. When I came to Ampleforth it was so magical. When I first saw it, it was just so amazing to me. It just felt massive and interesting and it was just a whole new world. Before I came here, I was utterly terrified to talk to anybody who was bigger than me. It's really, really helped develop my confidence. And now I feel comfortable wherever I am and I really feel like I belong here, I guess. I come to school at eight o'clock and I leave school at 8.30. I really do feel included though. I'm not missing out on anything. Day students aren't separated from the borders. We're all one big group and we really enjoy it. So one of the best things about doing drama at Ampleforth is you get to audition for these plays. There are two plays a year, loads of my friends are in it too, and it's just so much fun. And I love the theatre building and I love everything we're doing with it. Sports are a really big part and you can choose like what sports you want to do. There are loads and loads of sports you can do and you really feel like you can choose whatever you want. And then when you do that sport, you feel included in it and not just pushed to the side. What Ampleforth means to me is just being with people that I really like and just having fun, I guess. 
but also learning as well. It's learning new things and experiencing new things. When I think of Amberforth, I don't think classroom lessons. What I think of is having fun with all my friends and just having a laugh. I was booked onto another school, but I came round it kind of by chance and I really just fell in love with it because I just loved kind of the amount of outside space there was, the amount of chance that there was to do so many activities. All of the lessons and the teachers just seemed really passionate about what they were teaching. And so I kind of just completely fell in love with it when I came. I have really, really loved my time in the CCF and I think this is one of where some of my closest friendships have been formed. We get to experience a completely different aspect from school life and I think I've really enjoyed being able to teach the younger years and get to know them better. It's something that is both fun and challenging at the same time. Ampleforth has been my home for five years. It's been a family to me and I've become someone who I actually really like being. And it's something that's been encouraged hugely at Ampleforth is to be an individual, to be your own person, to be able to find something that you love and to be able to work on it. And I think that that is something that I have really loved from my time here. I think the core values are very much integrated into the school. And I think the key one for me has been integrity. And I think that it's been really important. It's something that Ampleforth does really well, is bringing out individuals' characters and bringing out individuals' passions and making sure that people can find something that they are really good at and that makes their time at Ampleforth really special. I think it is a way of life. I think, for me, this place has been incredible. We are Amplefordians and we are, that is very much who we are and that is something we're all very proud to be. Good morning, everyone. My name is Robin Dyer. I'm the head here at Ampleforth, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you for our inaugural e-open morning. We have over 70 families joining us today from all over the UK and other parts of the world. You are all very welcome. An online open morning is a first for us. We've had a couple of run throughs which have worked well. The strength of your broadband connection is important. So we are recording this and we'll put it on our website for you to watch later. That's if the technology lets you down. We're also conscious that looking at people talking in offices on a screen for an hour is not nearly as interesting for the children as actually coming to meet us in the wonderful setting of this school. So I hope the children have watched the uh, videos we've been running in the last 15 minutes about school. If not, we'll be playing these again after the live event has finished. If you'd like to ask a question today, please use the live chat function that can be found at the top right hand corner of your screen. It looks like a speech bubble. If you hover over it, it should say, show Q&A. Please type here any questions you'd like to ask today and your name. We will do our best to answer them as we go along. And we'll be ringing you after the event to make sure that we have covered everything you would like to know. We have a team uh, at the ready to answer your questions, several members of our senior leadership team, but mostly students, as they're the best people to tell you what Ampleforth College is really like. I hope very much they'll give you a good idea of what this great school offers. What you can't see over these screens is that Ampleforth is one of the most beautiful schools in the world, set in a gorgeous North Yorkshire Valley with stunning views and historic buildings. Our location is a huge asset and there can be few better places for young people to grow up and experience the joys of the countryside and all that it has to offer. It is teenage heaven here with plentiful, safe, open space 
and a huge range of activities to keep students stimulated. And of course, lots of friends all around them to share the experience and make it really fun. Our students absolutely love being here. And whilst we're all stuck in lockdown, they are telling us how much they miss, not just the atmosphere and social life of school, but this whole beautiful place. It feels like a home to them, and this never changes, even long after they have left the school. Old Amplefordians love to come back and visit the community and this special valley. I mentioned the importance of connection to place because we are unashamedly a full boarding school with a busy life and activities going on seven days a week. Apart from exiats, our students do not go home at weekends. We have day students, 18%, who are fully immersed in school life and are often here seven days a week. This full boarding allows students to completely immerse themselves in our community and everything the school has to offer. It allows the time and space to provide for our students a true compass for life. What do we mean by compass for life? At its core is Catholic education and Benedictine values, developed successfully for centuries all over Europe and by Ampleforth for over 200 years. The essence is, whether you are a Catholic or like me not, we regard each student as a, as a unique person with special talents, and it's our duty to enable the humanity of students to grow and flourish so they become the very best version of themselves. Through this, the whole community thrives and prospers. And our community here is very strong and extremely welcoming. When I first arrived last summer, I was bowled over by the friendliness and warmth of the students and staff. In 34 years of teaching and 18 years of leadership in a boarding school in the south of England, I can honestly say that I've not encountered anything quite like it. It is very special indeed, and a huge strength of this place. So what is my agenda as head? It is to make our compass for life even more compelling and relevant for today's world. We teach well, and our results are impressive on the website. But for me, that isn't enough. Full boarding schools like this should be about far more than just good results. Our students sing and perform music beautifully, act superbly, play sport to a high level, but these things are also not enough. We have a higher mission, which is to ensure that Amplefordians emerge from here, go on to university and the world of work, and are properly ready for these challenges. It is a national disgrace that so many students from our schools go to university and can't cope. I often hear business people say that students are arriving for interviews with fantastic degrees, but they often don't have the skills, the attitude or the values that the company is looking for. At Ampleforth, we are now emphasising much more independent thinking, learning and coping. This new programme will, we believe, help all our students in all aspects of school life. In every classroom, every tutorial conversation, in games practices, theatre rehearsals, our students will be drawn out of themselves by good questioning and constantly being encouraged to volunteer their opinions and their ideas. These are critical life skills which will enable Amplefordians to thrive in the, th the free range environment of university or the pressure filled job interview or when making a crucial pitch to new clients at work. They will show themselves to be flexible, resilient, problem solving, compelling communicators, 
who employers want to hire and others want to work with. They will also continue to be the grounded, caring and thoughtful people that Amplefordians always have been, who more often than not make the right decisions in life and know how to have a lot of fun. So my agenda fits perfectly with the Compass for Life. We are, tr we are fully preparing our students for the challenges they will face in the world beyond our beautiful valley. These are exciting times to be at Ampleforth. Now, before we go on to answer your questions that have been coming in, I would like to introduce our Dean, Father Ambrose, who's going to say a few words about the ethos of the school. Uh, yes, morning, Robin. Morning, everyone, and thank you. As Robin says, my name is Father Ambrose. I'm the Dean of the college, which means I have a special care for it as a Benedictine community, and it's great to be able to say a couple of things today. I'm absolutely delighted so many people are with us, and perhaps I can begin actually by speaking more personally to any boys and girls who are watching and listening. This is really for you. Of course, we're talking to parents, but the kind of education we offer here is really centred on you and your flourishing and your happiness. So we've got some pretty fantastic students of ours waiting on the line to answer questions today, and they're much more interesting than I am. But notice what an impression they make on visitors, how easily they engage and relate to people. There's something about Amplefordians that's really, I think, recognisable. Any old boys with us today? I think some. Now, wives of old boys, don't you agree? There's something that they have in common, those wily old Amplefordians. My own experience is that their capacity to engage with pretty well anyone from any background or age or personality is a capacity to listen and really to welcome others with genuine warmth, I believe, but also insight, a compassionate insight into other people's lives. In other words, we see Amphor students a growing and striking humanity that is a product of a deeply rooted instinct about what makes people tick, that sets them up to be people who can make a difference at whatever level and know that they have that gift to offer. Ample students know instinctively they're going to be the major feature of someone's life. So anyone who has experience with teenagers knows perfectly well, there's nothing better calculated to drive teenagers round the bend than if they feel that they're misunderstood or misinterpreted. Mum, dad, you don't understand. It leads to reactive behaviour, it leads to pushing back against expectations, excessive moodiness, lack of interest in doing well, etc. But the moment they receive good and stable mentoring based on a patient and compassionate desire to make that wonderful discovery of who they really are, then that's the magic formula. Our students leave comfortable in their own skin, fully alive and who engage generously, knowing their gifts are for the good of others. Now, where does that come from? Well, we keep life, the unique life of each individual who comes here, irrespective of background or of faith or whatever it is, in dialogue with our tradition. That's our invitation and it's an open one and it promises, I believe, an awful lot if you want it. Why else, frankly, would you pass a lot of other good schools on the drive to Ampleforth? So it's first of all about who you are, then what you do. That's what lies behind our well-known pastoral care. And that recognition and drawing out of potential can only happen in the context of the highest quality relationships where people matter to each other all the time. And the whole structure of the school and its day is about people mattering to each other. And that's what we're about, family life and coming together in our community, in our faith, in our scholarship as a family. That's the experience of community life in our tradition. Highest possible quality relationships, stability of relationships that last a lifetime. So what I'm saying is this, that a spiritually based education acknowledges, first of all, 
that there is a unique person of inestimable value standing in front of you, whatever you may think. And it's your job, our job, to recognise who that person really is, what is best and most true about them, however much they want to hide that and to start to draw that out. So our education is, first of all, an experience. It's something lived, it's something wrestled with, it's not a set of values as nice ideas on paper or clever thinking. It's about this person, this community, this situation, deep roots that will set you up for a lifetime. OK, I think that's definitely enough from me by way of an introduction. It's good to be here. You're going to have the real deal available to you today. So enjoy it. And thanks again. And back to Robin, I think. Thank you, Father Ambrose. And while Father Ambrose has been talking, I've been having a look at uh, your questions and there are quite a lot about boarding, our house structure and where our students come from. As I said earlier, we are a full boarding school and students uh, do not go home at weekends, uh, except for exiat. Lessons and sports fixtures run from Monday to Saturday. Uh, with a full programme of activities over the weekend. We have nine houses overall uh, with between 45 and 65 students in each one. Years seven and eight are currently in St Martin's Ampleforth across the valley, but will be moving over to join us at the college in their own junior house in September. 82% of our students are boarders and our day students are fully integrated into all aspects of school life. They are not put into a separate house. They're often here on Sundays too. Our students come from all over the UK. Almost 30% 30, 30 come from overseas, the majority from Europe, but also from South America, America and Asia. Ampleforth has been co-educational for over 18 years now, and girls make up around 40% of the school, although we're expecting uh, the numbers to grow to 50% uh, over the next few years. Obviously, our students aren't here at the moment, and we sadly can't take you uh, around the houses in reality. But Annabel Brown, housemistress of St Aidan's, has made a short video so you can see one of our girls' houses and uh, meet Annabel herself. Welcome to St Aidan's House at Ampleforth College. My name is Miss Brown and I'm the housemistress of St Aidan's and I'm delighted to be taking you on a virtual tour today. Like many of the houses here at Ampleforth College, St Aidan's is a modern, purpose-built boarding house and we can accommodate around 65 girls. We're based at the east side of the campus, right next door to the St Albans Sports Centre, which you could just see there in the distance. We have glorious views over St Cuthbert's House and EWs, and you can just see in the distance the Abbey Church there. We're also conveniently situated right next door to the College Infirmary, which is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So as we arrive at St Aidan's, you're greeted by a busy notice board and a bright hallway full of house photographs. Directly on your right hand side as you enter the house is the house study. This is where I am based and you'll often find girls in here having a chat or a cup of tea with me. I love working in here and I really particularly enjoy sitting beneath this beautiful tapestry of St Aidan, which was made by some of the girls on their annual retreat. Right next door to the study is the house kitchen. This is the absolute heart of the house and it's always busy, no matter the time of day. The girls absolutely love piling in here at break times, having cups of tea or hot chocolate with Matron, and I can't even begin to count the amount of pieces of toast that must be made here on a daily basis. As the girls get a little bit older, they become more adventurous, and we've had all sorts of fantastic meals cooked here too. Along from the kitchen is our common room, 
this is such a lovely space for the girls to relax in the evenings and at the weekends after a busy week at school. The girls can play piano in here, watch a movie or play some foosball. We also host socials here most weekends for a different year group. We're also really lucky to have a beautiful and secluded garden space at St Aidan's, which the girls really enjoy in the summer months. So as we turn right out of the common room and we make our way up the corridor, we leave behind us the communal areas of the house and we head into the private area, which is only available to the girls. This space here is our study room and the girls can come in here and use the computers and the printers in the evenings as needed. From here, the girls have direct access up to their dorms. They can also carry on down this path, which takes them to the boot room, our wonderful matron's office, who is the source of all knowledge, some of our day girls spaces, and also our laundry. The laundry is open to all of the girls, and the sixth form are able to use the machines independently. Otherwise, everything goes into the wash on a Monday and is returned to their shelves on a Wednesday each week. Upstairs, the spacious boarding accommodation is spread out over two floors with two galleries on each floor. Girls in the younger years share dorms of either four or two girls. But as you move through to sixth form, girls have their own single study bedrooms. These have plenty of storage space, which is much needed. And in St Aidan's, the girls are particularly lucky to have their own ensuite bathroom. They're also exceptionally lucky to have beautiful views of the orchard on one side and the abbey on the other. And so we finish this virtual tour of St Aidan's with our house chapel. As with all of the boarding houses at Ampleforth, the house chapel is a really significant place for our boarding community. We begin and end each day right here with morning and evening prayer. And we celebrate together our successes. We pray for those who are struggling and we take every moment that we can to be grateful for what we have. We're also really lucky to have a house chaplain who comes to celebrate mass every week and plays a really significant role in our daily lives. So I hope that you've enjoyed your virtual tour of St Aidan's. Please do get in touch if you have any questions at all. And I hope that we can show you around in person very soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was slightly weird having uh, no girls, no fun, no noise in that uh, lovely house. Anyway, um, the questions are coming in. Uh, we've uh, had some questions about how students settle in and also about international students. So I think we'll go now to Georgina, our head girl, who is in year 13 and at home at the moment in Hong Kong. Georgina. Good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Georgina and I'm currently in Hong Kong, where I've lived for my entire life. So I started at Ampleforth College in year nine and I'm in St Margaret's house, which is one of the three girls' houses within the college. A short overview of what I think the college has given me over the past five years. I really think um, the major thing, it's given me roots in the UK, in a sense that the school has really become a home to me. I've spent a majority of the past five years there and my friends and uh, my friends have pretty much become my family there. So that's why I think Ampleforth has become a bit of a home for me. The school itself does keep you very, very busy. There are like a million things that you can do at any hour of the day, so you can get really stuck in if that's what you want. And 
I think also you're around people a lot of the time. So I think 90% of the day you're around people, you're around your friends, teachers, house parents, staff. And I think that's also one of the reasons why you make such amazing relationships at Amphorth College and such good relationships because you're with them so, so much. But at the same time, that may seem a bit overwhelming for some students who aren't used to being around people that much. And I just say one thing on that, you can have downtime if you want, so you don't have to be around people all the time if that's what you want. So being an overseas student coming from Hong Kong, um, I think what's the main thing about Amphorth College is it has an amazing support system. I personally have um, seen this because coming from Hong Kong in year nine, I was really homesick during the first term and going into the second term as well. And I think that is probably quite a worry for quite a few students who haven't left home before like I did in year nine. And I just have to say, it does get a lot better. And the support system at school is amazing. Your friends and your house parents, staff, pastoral carers, they all really want to help and they all really care about you. And I think it's just homesickness is something you have to persevere with. So in my personal, um, in my personal experience, I said to my mum after two weeks, I'm coming home and I'm still here five years later. So um, that's just how great the pastoral care is and your friends, they're a massive support. So I think also what helped Amphorth with me being an overseas student is I was worried that I would have to fit in or fit a mould. And when I went, I realised there is no Amphorth mould. It's sort of as soon as you get there, you're an Amphorthian and that's what you are. And you're part of this huge community of people, this web of people who just genuinely care and want the best for you. I think that's what also really helped with homesickness as well, feeling that I was a part of something a lot bigger. Um, so I think also what helped me was that everyone integrates really well at school. So there isn't any divide between day students and boarders or anything like that. It's sort of the day students are there. So some of my best friends are day students and they're here. Well, they're at school seven days a week throughout the entire week um, at all the time. So there isn't really a massive divide. You don't miss much if you're a day student. Um, and it's just some it's enormous fun. Like it's really it's a great thing to have. It's been the part like the past five years, have been the best five years of my life. I think it's just been amazing. Um, also, being an overseas student, you really tend you really appreciate the um, the school travel department and how amazing and just really well organized they are. They organize everything from um, they organize everything. So there's the school bus that takes you to the train station and you can pretty much go anywhere from there. So for me, I used to take a taxi from the school to Manchester Airport and I've done that for the past five years. And when I was in year 11, I got paired up. So I had a sort of travel buddy, which is what the school tends to want to do with older students. They pay you the younger students so that you can help them settle and integrate better. And so I got paired with a boy who was starting in year nine when I was in year 11. And we got on so well that we still travel together, even though we don't really need to anymore because I'm in year 13 and here's year 11 right now. So I think Travel Buddy is also a really good example of how Ampleforth College integrates you enormously well. And also it shows that inter-year relationships are really good. So being friends with years below is just as good for the year, the older students as it is for the younger ones. Um, so yeah, I hope that's answered some questions and really helps. Well, it certainly did Georgina. Um... What are you missing most uh, in lockdown? Oh, what am I missing most? I'm missing a lot of things, I'm going to be honest. But I think the main thing I'm missing is my friends. I think when you're at school, um, you sort of forget, you forget that everyone's from everywhere. So being in Hong Kong now, I've sort of realised my friends are all over the place and it's quite hard to talk to them now. So I think that's why I'm missing the most. OK, understandable. We're missing you massively, Georgina. Thank you very much. Um, now, I think it'd be good to hear from uh, someone actually who's just started. Uh, so let's uh, hear from Elijah in year nine. Uh, Elijah, how do you feel you settled into life at Ampleforth? Um, thank you. And um, I settled into Ampleforth College really easily, but that's only because I've been boarding for a long time but also because the school really helped me as well. The people there, 
in my house, St Hugh's house, were really friendly, really kind and welcoming. And um, that's just why Amberforth is such a great school to be at, because because everyone's in different years. No one is actually secluded to their own year. We're all integrated with one another and we're all friendly. I've got friends in year 11 as well, as well as my own year. And that's why Amberforth College is such a nice school uh, to settle into. But I think the most important thing is that everyone settles in different. So I can't really say um, how settling in is overall because everyone's experience is much different. But the one thing I can definitely say is that when you do eventually settle in, you have an absolutely amazing time at Amforth College. There's so much to do and you're preoccupied all the time. Um, when, when you first arrive, you, um, we have lots of socials, lots of activities within the house and other houses to get to know one another better. And especially in year nine, the first five weeks, we have different socials at different houses or our own houses. And this really helps because we're getting to know each other much better and we're making new friends as we go along. Within the house, especially, we have a house retreat after the first half term and this is where we're put into different groups in our house of all the years so year 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Um, we're just doing activities with those groups and we're bonding together to build friendships, build um, everything that we need to grow in Amberforth College. One thing that I thoroughly enjoy and re which really helped me to settle in was the house competitions and events. The first uh, weekend we had House Tug of War and this was really eye opening because it showed me how competitive everyone can get. And this is what I can absolutely love about Amforth College. Um, I hope this has helped in any way at all. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Just one quick question from me. Um, all that sounded brilliant, but did it, were there no problems for you? Yeah, was there any bullying, for example? Um, for me especially, there was no bullying at all. And at Amperforth, bullying is practically being stomped out. There are a few cases of uh, he said, she said, but that's in every school. That's never going to change. But um, bullying at Amperforth College is, yeah, like I said, practically stomped out because safeguarding here is amazing. The team of professionals that help everyone. And if you do feel like you're being uh, pushed away, there's so many people you can talk to who can get this all fixed, which again is why Amforth is so amazing pastorally. Well, that's, that's great to hear, Elijah. Thank you very much indeed. Now, questions are coming in, and we've had some um, questions about the curriculum I can see on the screen. Uh, what we offer how we stretch our high achieving students and also how we provide support to those who need it. And I think I'll add a question, uh, a question we've received about our extraordinary facilities. I think the best person to answer all of these questions is Dr. Hannah Pomroy, uh, the person who runs the school, our deputy head. Hannah. Thank you, Robin. We provide an enormous wealth of opportunities for our students to develop their talents and interests, their skills and their aptitudes, both inside and outside of the classroom. Our programme of academic enrichment includes academically focused trips and visits to universities, lectures, plays and workshops outside of school, engagement in external competitions like the Science and Maths Olympiads, and by inviting in a wide range of speakers. The Learning Hub, new for September, will further enhance support for learning for students with additional needs. We have specialist staff who provide tailored one-to-one -one and small group guidance, as well as drop-in support opportunities. Expertise in enabling students to have success at whatever level they are combined with a focus on developing students' independence and resilience ensures that they flourish. Most of our students go on to Russell Group 
uh, or Sutton Trust universities. Last year, 65% to Russell Group, 72% to Sutton Trust. But we also encourage and support our students who want to go off to European universities. And we have a tailored program of expert preparation for SATs um, to go to American universities. We've got eight students currently studying at Cambridge University, and there's another three in our current upper six, hoping to join them in October. In the early years of our curriculum, we aim to embed our expectations and provide a platform on which to achieve excellence at GCSE and in the sixth form. Each learner is appropriately challenged. At GCSE, we have 18 different subjects to choose from, and this increases to 22 at A level. And we also have three BTECs on offer. The new GCSEs and A levels, were, which were introduced recently, are harder and more rigorous. And as Robin has said, the renewed focus on independent thinking, learning, and coping is absolutely essential to ensure that our students can both maximise their exam outcomes, but also be able to see beyond those narrow tram lines of exam success. As you will have seen, hopefully, in the videos at the beginning of the, the e-open morning, we have some amazing facilities. We're enormously lucky. Two and a half thousand acres in which to run, fish, swim, cycle, walk. Apparently, we have 17 rugby pitches. 16 too many in my book. We've also got the St Albans Sports Centre, which has squash courts, a swimming pool, large sports hall and a strength and conditioning suite, especially for our own students. There's a performing arts centre with tiered seating, a sprung floor, mirrored walls, a bar for dance and a large screen for projection. We have a theatre with two stages, full lighting and sound rig and a green room. There are chaplaincy spaces in the main school as well as in each house a tea room, sixth form social areas, amazing facilities in our science labs, DT workshops, including a, a CAD suite, music practice rooms and a scholar room, computers for composing specially, an art studio, an exhibition space, which includes a print room, live drawing opportunities, and a specialist art library. All our departments work to give our students the very best education in their specialisms. And almost without exception, if a student is interested in something, then we will be able to find a member of staff who will be able to help them in this enthusiasm. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Hannah, very much. Um, yeah, lots of questions uh, following on from what you've been saying are coming in about co-curricular activities. Um, as Hannah said, we've got a huge range at Amper Forth. It's a great strength of the school, and we're so lucky to be in such a fantastic location, uh, which obviously really helps. As Hannah said, we've got uh, two, two and a half thousand acres, 500 acres per kid, and everything from indoor and outdoor shooting ranges our own school shoot. Now, this needed to be explained to me when I arrived, I have to say, and well stocked fishing lakes. Um, another odd thing, a well, fantastic thing, a Land Rover Restoration Club, our famous pipe band, the largest one south of the Scottish border, who tour all over the country and the world, a thriving art and drama and music um, uh, offer. The Scholar Choir and Orchestra are both astonishing, and even our own Dance Academy. So all students get involved in a number of different activities and Friday afternoons are dedicated to this. Uh, we have a particular focus on service and charity work, uh, what is called Phase 4, and lots of um, local community projects. And the CCF is exciting, challenging and hugely popular. 
there's so much to say here that I think we'll talk to, uh, to, to a few students about all of this, to be honest. I think it's much better that we do. So let's start with Ben in year 13, who is a keen all round sportsman. Ben, good morning to you. Good morning, Mr. Dyer. Um, hello, so my name is Benedict Cohen. I am the captain of swimming and a senior member of the first rugby team. So today I'm going to talk about these two sports. Um, but as you said, I would also like to emphasize that Amphorth offer a wide range of sports and activities. Um, so, for example, when my sister joined the school, she was able to continue her passion for dance. Um, my brother is able to do country sports, which consist of shooting, fishing, beagling and many more. And my younger sister was able to do the two, her two favorite sports, which are hockey and netball. So Amforth have an amazing uh, rugby facilities alongside a well-known history in the sport. Um, this season, we managed to get to the NatWest Bowl final, um, which was sadly postponed due to COVID-19. But I think we were fortunate enough this year to have quite a talented team um, with some exceptional players, such as Theo Smurden, our number 10, who re recently made his debut um, for the under-18 Arlen squad. Um, however, I'm sure everyone on the team would agree that the reason why we got so far was because of the quality of the coaching and how close we got as a team not just on the pitch, uh, but off it as well. Coming from a London-based day school, the immense publication uh, to rugby first team, um, um, the adrenaline kept us going. It's an amazing way to and it's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Um, county and national level and I can say the facilities and coaching Amphorth have offered has been first rate. Um, per, uh, something personal for me is my father was also a very keen swimmer um, when at his time at Amphorth and beating his records will, was one of the greatest achievements in my life. Um, of dedication this school to do this at the St Albans Centre is always such a pleasure to me. We have a great, it always is how hand you are. I think the coaches are very good at adapting to your abilities. Um, I hope this has given you a little insight of what sport is like at Amphorth. Thank you. Thank you very much Ben. I hope your dad's forgiven you for breaking his record. Uh, and I think we should go now uh, uh, next to uh, Louis in year 11 to hear a little bit about the musical life of the school. Louis, are you there? Hello, thank you very much, Mr. Dyer. Um, so in terms of, of music in school, uh, particularly, um, it's certainly at the heart of, of Ampleforth. Uh, it's very central to the way in which we, we live um, and I think particularly even to those who who don't have musical backgrounds, who don't take instrumental lessons. Um, it's evident through the singing we do as a community um, every every week in mass, in in assembly, uh, in house compline. Uh, I, I think we would struggle to establish that that really strong sense of community without it, without those opportunities. Um, the music department offer a really large variety of ensembles um, as activities, uh, which I think I possibly value the most is the variety. Uh, not only do we have the orchestra and the scola, we perform uh, a lot of uh, repertoire, but I also play the piano in the big band. Uh, some students participate in the pipe band as well. Um, so you can definitely expect a really broad musical education uh, from the school. Performance uh, has, a very, has a very big emphasis, um, not only in the Valley, but also several of our groups are uh, definitely in demand all over the country, um, which is really useful 
um, we can develop as musicians and develop beyond that even, um, getting used to these large audiences, um, perhaps more high intensity environments. Uh, it's in a good way, very useful. Um, we're still managing to continue this through um, through e Ampleforth. We're, we're not letting the current situation um, stop us. Um, we, we have our ensembles running as normal as, as normal as we possibly can uh, with rehearsals uh, online um, and there will be recitals over the coming weeks um, I think on the Facebook page so be sure not to miss any of those. Um, I think we owe these fantastic opportunities uh, to the incredible team uh, of professional musicians who come into school uh, every week from all over the UK um, as a really strong resource uh, for us as men then our, our mentors uh, and they tutor us a uh, really strong resource um, to have in the department in the music department. Several people uh, are also awarded music scholarships, uh, choral and organ scholarships each year to top universities. Uh, which I think is really testament to the high standard of liturgical music uh, that we embrace that is so undeniably central uh, to life at Ampleforth. Thank you. Louis, what is that in the background there behind you? That's, um, well, it's a, it's a very nice piano. I, I, it, I possibly is, use it too often. Well, um, what I'd like you to do, Louis, I'm sorry about this, uh, and I know this is unscripted, but would you like to just play a few uh, few notes for us, please? Um, I think our audience would love to hear you play. I could. Why not? Why not? Thank you, Louis. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I'll play the opening to a piece I'm working on at the moment. OK, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I think a, a remote round of applause for Louis, please. Remember. Thank you very much. That's well done, Louis. Right. Well, um, we've we've uh, heard from Elijah before. Uh, if you remember, is he's in year nine. Um, but I'd like to go back to him if he's still on the line, uh, as uh, he's very involved with the theatre, and we are getting some questions about the theatre. So, Elijah, are you there? Yeah, I am. Thank you again. Um, so this time I'll be talking about the theatre and the activities involved uh, around Amphorce College. Um, so I'll start with the theatre actually. So within the theatre there's so much you could do. Uh, you could do like lambda and stuff like that, the uh, dancing lessons. Um, you can actually do plays and performances and there's two on every year. You have the main one, uh, which is a musical every two years. Uh, and there was one recently just gone actually called um, We Will Rock You, which I was involved in. And this also helped me to settle in as well because it gave me new friends and a new um, a new place where I could uh, say that, yeah, I was there, I did that and be really proud of. Uh, another play which happens every uh, summer term is the uh, exhibition play. And there should have been one uh, uh, being performed this term, but um, sadly with COVID-19 uh, we had to cancel that unfortunately. But yeah, so if I explain more a bit, a bit about the theatre, uh, the theatre has a massive stage, a downstage and an upstage, and, and it, the downstage is kind of slow for dramatic purposes. Uh, the backstage is also um, as big as the front stage is, well, I think it has to be, to be honest. Um, the lighting and sound quality there is amazing and very professional. Not only is the theatre amazing, but the staff there and the actors that work there are all amazing as well, which is absolutely fabulous. 
And the one thing that really makes me um, feel welcome is the uh, green room. Every break time, students can feel free just to go down to the green room and talk to the teachers, have a cup of tea or biscuit. And this is really nice um, and really welcoming and warm. Uh, some more activities around the school. So uh, every student is bombarded with so many opportunities at Anforce College, whether it be CCF, to do with arts and crafts, um, music. And this is absolutely amazing because it develops you as a person, develops you for future life. And if you don't use those skills that, uh, when you leave Amforth College, they're still there with you and you can say that you've done something proud, which I think is absolutely amazing and mind blowing, really. Um, I think I think my brief uh, analogies helped anyway. Well, thank you. Thank you, Elijah. And just one question, very quick question from me. Uh, do you do any work? Uh, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> That's all right. I'm joking. I know. I know that you're working very hard. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, let's, let's hear from one more student. Um, we have another Year Nine student with us, uh, Izzy, who is a very keen member of our equestrian club. Uh, so, Izzy, we'd love to hear a little bit about the horses. Hi. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so, one of my main hobbies is horse riding. And I am a member of the equestrian team where we compete nationwide at National Schools Equestrian Association events such as the National Championships, Hicks Ed Royal Horse Show and the Windsor Horse Show. Uh, on campus, we have a newly installed 60 by 40 metre arena where you can book lessons with your own coaches uh, through our equestrian manager, Mrs. Cook, where we occasionally have lessons with uh, people from British eventing, such as James Somerville, who we had recently. But if you're still a keen member to be, a, if you're still a keen member of the equestrian team, but you don't live nearby, then you can have you can bring your horse up to the college, and there is livery just a few minutes down the road so that you can still be involved with all of the NSCA events and all of the equestrian events, but you don't necessarily have to live nearby. When you're a member of the equestrian team, you can ride during game sessions on Mondays and Wednesdays, and you can also ride on weekends and on Fridays during activities. If you don't have your own horse, but you're still a keen rider or you're new into riding and you really want to do it, then there is a facility near school where you can have a lesson during Friday activities. And it's like I said before, it's for all abilities. If you've never ridden before, but you're really keen, then you can go. Or if you're just experienced, but you say you're a foreign student, but you don't have your horse here, then you can go and keep up with your abilities. Occasionally, there are trips to polo lessons, veterinary clinics and race courses which are for students who are looking for careers in veterinary, racing or hospitality. I hope this helped. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you very much, uh, Izzy. Um, we've got uh, time for a few more questions. We are running a little bit late, everybody, but we'll get to uh, all of your questions. And a lot of questions coming in about years seven and eight, who, as we said before, are coming over to rejoin us on site in the junior house in September. And there's nobody better to talk about uh, years seven and eight than Dr. David Moses, who is the head at St. Martin's Ampleforth. David. Good morning, Robin. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm David Moses. I'm the head of seven and eight at St. Martin's Ampleforth. Um, together with my wife, Claire, who also teaches at Ampleforth and our two sons, we've lived and worked in Ampleforth since 2005. When we arrived, I was a teacher of English, but I soon moved into pastoral care. I was in St. Oswald's as an assistant, and then latterly in St. John's for nearly eight years as housemaster. And then we moved in 2016 uh, across the valley to look after the juniors. Fantastic move. Uh, in September, we're going to be situated in the junior house for Ampleforth College, that's St. Edward's and St. Wilfred's house. And I should mention that that house is right at the center of the college and it allows our pupils 
ease of access to, to everything here and all the excellent facilities. We're very proud of the children in our care. They're very hard working, they're kind, they're well mannered, they're full of joy and they're, they're a pleasure to be around. And they're very spiritually active, they take great care of one another and they take great pride in their important roles in the school and that includes leading prayers and, and mass. They're very competitive on the sports field and they take their team sports really seriously and they aim for excellence. And they're intellectually very curious and we encourage them to be inquisitive about the world around them, to be outward looking, especially given the remarkably be beautiful setting uh, in which they have their schooling. They're interested in the arts. We have some very strong artists and actors and dancers and musicians and vocalists. And you're going to hear from one of them this morning. They don't just play at things, they devote themselves to excelling. And it's become rather a mantra with them that excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. They can all have that. They're independent learners. Their boarding situation really helps them to develop self-discipline and self-reliance, while the family atmosphere and the caring boarding supervision that we have helps them feel uh, their own self-worth. And it really reinforces the importance of courtesy and good manners, the way that we live together. What well, makes them different? I think they are a bit different. I think they have a very strong moral compass and that gives them great confidence and moral courage and an awareness really when dealing with others. They're very concerned about acting with integrity. Integrity is a big word for us, about doing the right thing even when nobody's looking. And their good leadership is leadership by example. So our learning and our tailor-made activity programme mean that we know each child individually very well and we celebrate their many talents. Our extracurricular activities and trips are where we really come together though as a close community. Uh, we have fun together and we help to, that helps to build relationships which will support our children as they grow into the well-rounded, physically active and intellectually inquisitive young adults who are ready to progress to the next stage of their education. And we're really proud of those very strong, popular kind of boarding experiences that we have. They've got a real family feel and they're enhanced, especially over the weekend. We have a very full social program every weekend. We do some flexible boarding and it's a good preparation. Lots of people who start with flexible boarding become full boarders at year nine. It's really important to us that our pupils arrive in year nine already integrated fully prepared immediately to settle and to thrive. And that's a statement about academic focus, but also more importantly, it's a statement about the way that we aim to nurture our children into well-rounded young adults who have a strong understanding of how to fulfill their potential and how to thrive within the community. Thank you, Robin. Uh, thank you, David, and uh, you, you achieve everything that you've said there. Um, it's really wonderful the work that you're doing um, and the children are fantastic. And actually, we're very fortunate to have one of them on the line with us now. And it's Stephanie. Stephanie, I wonder whether you could give us a few insights into year seven. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Good morning. My name is Stephanie and I am in year seven. I bought at St. Martin's Ampleforth and I'm privileged to be both an academic and music scholar. As a music scholar who sings and plays multiple instruments, for example, the violin, piano and harp, I am fortunate to have the help, the support of my music teachers that have helped me expand my repertoire and stretch my abilities in technique and presentation. As an academic scholar, I enjoy various academic pursuits outside the classroom. For example, in Lyceum Club, I have learned about creative problem solving and different ways to collaborate with each other and reach a solution. Not only that, but I have also enjoyed reading the story of Beowulf in English, where at we had to look at different perspectives to reach a conclusion. The teachers are approachable and for a talkative like me, I must say that they are very patient indeed. The tutors in particular 
make sure that students interact with each other and they ask lots of questions to make us consider different angles and perspectives. They tell us that there are no right or wrong answers, thereby allowing me to explore my thoughts and without being afraid to ask questions. At St Martins, there are lots of activities too, so I'm never bored. I have taken part in horse riding, music theory, drama and scholar. I, I enjoy these very much. I also have enjoyed my time at St Martins and Perforth, and I can assure you that this is just the beginning. Thank you. Well, thank you, Stephanie. That was absolutely lovely to hear uh, what you had to say. That smile tells everything that we need to know about your, your time at St Martins. We look forward to having you over here uh, at the main college uh, in September. So we're coming now to the end of our time. We've overrun a little bit, but I can see there are still many questions that we actually we haven't managed to answer. Our housemasters and mistresses and members of the uh, senior leadership team uh, and, and, and some staff from the admissions department and the go, are going to go through all these uh, questions now and we'll try to ring you today to answer, uh, to answer the questions and also to arrange individual conversations with any particular uh, member of staff uh, you might be interested in talking to. You can also find uh, admissions uh, information uh, on our website. Well, uh, this has been a very popular event. Uh, we're bowled over by the support we're getting and we're holding another e-open day on Saturday 13th June. So please, please do join us uh, then and invite others to come along if, if you wish to. Um, I very much hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's been great for us to have you here and I hope very much uh, to be able to meet you properly in the near future. So to finish, can I thank Stephanie, Izzy, Elijah, Louis, Ben and Georgina on your behalf? A strange experience for our students doing this, but uh, can I say to the students you did really well? Thank you. And thank you everybody who's been here uh, in this open morning. Keep well. Goodbye uh, for now from the Valley. Thank you.
What Amp Forth means to me is all about like, the lifelong friends and shaping everyone's personalities and trying new things. So that would include like sports and being with your friends like, the whole time. I think it's quite nice because it's like separate and I feel like it's really nice to be away from home and then going home and being with your family so it's kind of like two worlds and it's quite it's really nice to be with your friends for like half the year and then with your family when you go back. Pipe Band's really shaped me as a person it's just something that I can do outside of school. Here it's quite nice to just get everyone involved in that kind of thing. The atmosphere in the house is really good because they always have people to talk to and if you're ever like down or sad then there's always people that you can talk to like the house mistresses. I feel like I've got like another family. So sports really good here because it gives everyone a wide opportunity to do every sport each term which I think is really nice to like, be able to try different things. I feel really lucky because it's just like so many opportunities that we can do and obviously the support in the lessons is really good and I feel like I've learnt like so much. You have so much to do here that it kind of just becomes a little world instead of a school. We are part of one big family. I think um, we do build a sense of community as our main priority and forth. And it's just a homely atmosphere, it's just very pleasant. Being at Ampleforth means many things. It allows you to uh, succeed in anything you want to. There's a very positive atmosphere around here that if you don't succeed, then try again. The support around here is phenomenal. You're not expected to be that independent guy when you're in first year. This is the point of Ampleforth. You're made into that independent person, which I feel like you are by the time you get to our stage at sixth form, which is nice. They do it, they do it exactly right. I think the favourite time of the week at school is Abbey Mass on Sunday. To be able to perform in that every week is not just helping yourself, it's friendship. It does help you become a better person, I feel. A more all-rounded person, a more genuine person. And someone that generally people can actually like and get along with in the professional world, which is what you want to be. I think the Benedictine values are pretty key to our education here. I think the, the main one that strikes me is the second chance and I think that everyone at our age always do make mistakes and I think you should be forgiven. I would just say you'd be missing out if you didn't come. I think you'd lose a dimension of education if you didn't come. The teachers are very supportive and welcoming and they will always uh, have your back. When I came to Ampleforth it was so magical. When I first saw it, it was just so amazing to me. It just felt massive and interesting and it was just a whole new world. Before I came here I was utterly terrified to talk to anybody who was bigger than me. It's really, really helped develop my confidence and now I feel comfortable wherever I am and I really feel like I belong here I guess. I come to school at 8 o'clock and I leave school at 8.30. I really do feel included though, I'm not missing out on anything. Day students aren't separated from the borders, we're all one big group and we really enjoy it. So one of the best things about doing drama at Ampleforth is you get to audition for these plays. There are two plays a year, loads of my friends are in it too, and it's just so much fun. And I love the theatre building and I love everything we're doing with it. Sports are a really big part and you can choose like what sports you want to do. There are loads and loads of sports you can do and you really feel like you can choose whatever you want. And then when you do that sport you feel included in it and not just pushed to the side. What Ampleforth means to me is just being with people that I really like and just having fun, I guess. 
but also learning as well. It's learning new things and experiencing new things. When I think of Ampleforth, I don't think classroom lessons. What I think of is having fun with all my friends and just having a laugh. I was booked onto another school, but I came round it kind of by chance and I really just fell in love with it because I just loved kind of the amount of outside space there was, the amount of chance that there was to do so many activities. All of the lessons and the teachers just seemed really passionate about what they were teaching. And so I kind of just completely fell in love with it when I came. I have really, really loved my time in the CCF and I think this is one of where some of my closest friendships have been formed. You get to experience a completely different aspect from school life and I think I've really enjoyed being able to teach the younger years and get to know them better. It's something that is both fun and challenging at the same time. Ampleforth has been my home for five years. It's been a family to me and I've become someone who I actually really like being. And it's something that's been encouraged hugely at Ampleforth is to be an individual, to be your own person, to be able to find something that you love and to be able to work on it. And I think that that is something that I have really loved from my time here. I think the core values are very much integrated into the school. And I think the key one for me has been integrity. And I think that it's been really important. It's something that Ampleforth does really well, is bringing out individuals' characters and bringing out individuals' passions and making sure that people can find something that they are really good at and that makes their time at Ampleforth really special. I think it is a way of life. I think, for me, this place has been incredible. We are Amplefordians and we are, that is very much who we are and that is something we're all very proud to be.